Hey everybody, DJ Lou here, and up next, a two-part video I hope you're going to enjoy. I'm going to break down both my ceremony rig and my reception rig, and uh, everything from power to equipment, what uh, pieces I've used, DIY that I've uh, incorporated into this, to basically enable me as a solo DJ to do what I do for each of my events. So, let's get to this. <music> All right, so a lot of you know, thought and process goes into every piece of equipment that I buy, everything that I set up. I'm always trying to reduce my time for setup, trying to lighten the load. You know, sometimes that works to my advantage, sometimes it doesn't. I've interchanged things like having a, a controller with a single coffin. I've uh, broken things down into smaller pieces. And ultimately, I'm always trying to think of a couple different things. Thinking modular, so this way I can always interchange pieces uh, where necessary. So I'm always thinking, you know, if my mixer dies, can I swap another piece out? You know, of course, if my laptop dies, bring in a second laptop. But I'm always just trying to be, you know, one or two steps ahead. You know, if something breaks, if something malfunctions, something freaks out, you know, have some type of plan B and sometimes even a plan C to kind of work around that. So each one of these pieces that I've bought represents uh, both quality, cost, you know, because, you know, I am not rich. I can't afford every single piece of most expensive equipment that's out there. But also, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time setting up, breaking down. I don't want to make it overly complex. Uh, but some people will say that my setup is complex. And yes, you know, there are definitely people out there who have much simpler setups and definitely people that have even more complex setups. And I think I found this kind of uh, happy medium. And I pack all this inside my uh, 2011 Town & Country. I don't have to even uh, roll down my, uh, my middle row of seats. So all this can be very compact, gets me in and out of an event pretty quick. In general, I can do a ceremony setup in sometimes as little as 10 minutes as long as I have everything ready to go. My reception rig, sometimes I can get around 23 to 30 minutes, depending if I'm having to do um, anything special with that. Everything that I do, I try to make sure that it makes sense, that it's cost effective, and that it gets me from point A to point B and hopefully lasts me for a good long time. So without further ado, I'm gonna roll my cart out here. I'm gonna break down each piece that I use, um, you know, where a backup solution may uh, you know, work into play if something happens with it, and uh, let's get to this. Now, what you just saw me roll out is the entirety of my ceremony and reception systems. Now, my typical setup doesn't include lights. Uh, most of my clients don't prefer lights. Uh, it's an interesting phenomenon that I've uh, run into as part of my niche. Uh, but uh, this is it. So I'm going to roll this off to the side and start breaking down each piece. I'm going to go over everything in detail. Right, we're going to start off our setup just like I would at any venue. I'm going to actually start with my reception rig first. And part of the reason is I use my cart to uh, move things along for my ceremony as well. So I have to move things off of that first anyways. Plus, once I get done my ceremony, naturally there's always cocktail hour after. So everything already has to be set up and working. So reception set up first. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is this Odyssey folding stand. I've actually used uh, both the uh, black uh, label version of this and also the standard version. It, it's, it's been solid, what can I say? Um, it, there, there are a uh, couple shortcomings of this. Uh, first off, the height is just a tad too high. I wish this was about two to three inches shorter. Uh, so it makes my arms have to come up a little bit more for my equipment. But it's a trade-off. Uh, this is a relatively inexpensive piece of equipment, especially compared to, uh, once you get into custom solutions, those can run into the thousands or many of thousands of dollars. So for pound for pound, price-wise, utility-wise, ruggedness, it's really hard to beat this. All right, so these Odyssey stands do have this uh, shelf uh, that folds down and locks in, gives a little bit more rigidity on the sides. I also uh, initially built a pass-through hole uh, for my cables to run down. That being said, I decided to do something a little different for 2019, uh, and so far it's worked for the uh, two gigs that I've done this in. I now just leave this up, and the weight in, of my equipment both pushing against the sides and on the top actually still uh, leaves this very rigid. So I was initially concerned that it might uh, bang around a bit, bow in, collapse, but that has not been the case. So this allows me to do the next thing that I do. All right, so you may have noticed when I initially rolled this uh, rig in, I had two additional pieces on top, and that is my ceremony setup. 
and uh, they're pretty much identical. I wanted to keep everything interchangeable so that way if I need to swap things out, it's easily doable. Now in my mic box, I have uh, two receivers. Now I don't have an antenna splitter on this, but I can easily just do uh, two uh, antenna relocation uh, pieces that come with Sennheiser itself. In addition, I have this custom panel made by NLFX, has some uh, custom writing on it, including my favorite 1.21 gigawatts of electricity to power out of this. Now you might hear me say NLFX uh, quite a bit because every one of my custom uh, cables, some of these panels, they're all made by them. So shout out to Ben Stowe and others. But so I just simply, now I do have this PowerCon cable instead of your standard uh, IAM type cable. And part of that is just to kind of make sure everything locks in nicely. It just gives a little bit of sense of, uh, of safety and satisfaction in this. So I just simply route this down to this bottom panel. Now on the bottom, uh, we do have my UI16 and I've uh, talked extensively about this. I'll have a link in the video below for that. Um, it, it's just been an amazing piece of kit. If, if I could say anything of my setup, this is probably the most singular piece that enables me as a solo DJ to do what I do. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit further into that later in the video of how with my iPad, I can control so many different uh, aspects of things from mic mixing, my top, what I call my top layer, where my regular uh, controller or Rain 62 resides. I can control all that. I can record every uh, event and I do every event I've ever done has been recorded. Um, I can play back on this as well, so I can not only, you know, play as a standby just in case if I'm not uh, behind it, but if something goes wrong, if uh, some, you know, my mixer dies or something like that, I already have a song queued up uh, for this. I simply press a, a button, and that's it. Things are playing while I'm troubleshooting everything, swapping everything out. The entertainment doesn't stop. In addition, you'll see this one cable up here. This is my aux uh, bank up here this feeds down to my sennheiser iem 300. now if the ui16 is the single best piece of equipment i have in my whole setup the iem may just be the second best uh, this gives me great versatility in placing speakers wherever i need to i've had this in my reception rig for quite a while i've added one for my ceremony rig as well i've done an antenna relocation on this as well uh, just keep everything nice, clean, neat, and whatnot. And below all this is a trip light PDU. Now, there's nothing really too special about this. It does have a covered uh, power switch in it, but um, this doesn't have conditioning or anything because when I hook this up to power, um, I have that all managed by my UPS. All right, so what I just threw into the side is my UPS. This is the CyberPower model uh, that I have. I also have my APC model as well, and I go extensively into the reasonings why I use the UPS, um, both for ceremony and reception. So I'll have the video uh, and blog post below for that as well. Now I do have this mounted backwards in here. Uh, and part of the reason is if I'm gonna keep it close in here, I'm gonna take advantage of being able to split off my power between my speakers. So this way, if I'm truly concerned about power outages or anything like that, and I do experience one, I can have one speaker uh, that is purely on surge protection and uh, noise protection and all that. And that will shut off in the case of a power outage. Now that gives me the advantage of not using as much battery um, in that uh, type of scenario. Now, in many other cases, I'll just throw this near a power outlet and run a, a cable all the way over to that, but it gives me some flexibility and choice uh, on where I want to place this. So at this point, I can actually split off two different directions. I can set up a speaker right away and actually start doing sound check and listening to stuff while I'm doing the remainder of my sound. Sometimes I uh, get lazy on that and I'll just start assembling my top layer, but let's uh, assemble at least one of the speakers out here and start doing a sound check on that. <laughs> All right, I have this handy Odyssey laptop case I've had for quite a while. It's uh, not perfect, but it's actually done uh, really well over the years. Has a magnetic uh, clasp to kind of keep this uh, together. Has individual pockets, my laptop in the back. Um, sometimes I'll put my spare laptop up here at front. Has a little pocket here on the side. Inside, we have uh, nice compartments. I keep my headphones in one side, my iPad in another. 
uh, hard drives and then miscellaneous stuff as well. There's also some clear areas in here uh, to kind of just visually keep things together. It's also the side pocket as well. I used to keep a laptop in here before, but made uh, sometimes for it to flop out. This just wasn't made uh, to carry it. Um, but this has been a really rugged bag uh, that uh, has served me well over the years. Now, the reason I uh, brought this out is for my USB drives. Uh, I've got three in here. One's my recording drive, and it just happens to have uh, red writing on it, so uh, perfect for that. Then I have two identically cloned drives uh, that has all my music for the night, has all my uh, emergency uh, stuff, some mixes that I've made over the years. And I keep this on here, so this is what I queue up on the Soundcraft when needed uh, for ceremony. It would be to play the entirety of that for reception is to play for uh, backup solutions. All right, so my speakers are set up and uh, if you see my UI 16 video, you know I control everything with my iPad mini. You can also use a phone, you can use uh, Android, it's all browser based. I can use my laptop, it does not matter. Everything can be controlled by that. And um, you know, I do use this for ceremony as well, but for uh, this rig, now I can start playing some music just to make sure everything is uh, working as expected. I can control everything um, wherever needed. I'll get into a little bit more detail when I start talking about my uh, speakers that I put out uh, remotely for a cocktail uh, for dinner. Um, but now I'm sound checked, everything's good, and I can start assembling my top layer. All right, this is my uh, Gator case for my NS7 III. It's actually a case for the NS7 II, um, but it still fits the same. Uh, with minus, I take out the display panel. On the NS7 III, unfortunately, you just can't see it. Fits, but uh, makes no sense keeping it in. I do have a customization on this. I have drilled a hole um, to pass through cables. Now, you might wonder why would I do that with a, uh, a top of a uh, case, but I actually use this as a tabletop for um, this uh, folding stand. I just learned, I kept the rubber feet on, on this and they uh, fit nicely onto this. And it just adds a nice even look. I don't have to worry about putting this top anywhere um, in my car when I have to uh, you know, put things away. And it just keeps things nice and simple. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is heavy. It's 75 pounds in total. Um, and there's no handles on the front and back, so it makes for a little bit awkward uh, to pick up, but I've learned to live with it over the years. I love moving platters, and uh, it's just a little bit of a trade-off for what I need. Now, occasionally I'll put this on chairs just so I don't have to squat and lift this up as much, but it's just something I manage. All right, so this is all about perspective. I try to keep everything as nice and neat, fewest uh, amount of cables as possible. So what we have in here, we have a Belkin uh, power strip. I actually have the same strip in my, uh, my Rain 62 mixer case as well. I have a uh, power brick for my iPad. I have a very short throw cable that goes in here for the NS7 III itself. And this is the power run uh, for my Apple power brick. Now, without tearing this all apart, I do have that power dock USB-C uh, three port hub uh, that's beneath uh, this mixer. And I'm just using this uh, power cord for that. Now from the USB-C hub, I do have this substantial connector uh, for it. I might eventually get a black one just to be a little bit on the uh, stealthy side, but uh, this has uh, been working fine. I did also find this right angled uh, connector for my iPad, just to kind of keep things tucked down nice and neat, not having a cable sticking out on the side itself. Now I do uh, drop this power cord down uh, into uh, my portholes. It is a little bit longer than what I needed, uh, but I wanted to have uh, a longer cord just in case if I ever had to bypass stuff. It gives me a little extra uh, run uh, to work with. All right, time to dip back into my Odyssey bag and grab out my 15 inch MacBook Pro. This is actually my backup uh, one. This is my workhorse everyday machine. Um, I have a silver uh, mid 2018 that is actually supposed to arrive um, the day after uh, uh, filming this video. Uh, but this has been a really uh, great laptop, super powerful, uh, works great as a video editor with the Vega 20 chip in it. Um, but this is part of the reason why I went USB-C. I wanted to accommodate uh, new hardware from Apple. So throw this up on here, one single cable to connect. And I power on up. 
All right, so now I have this uh, SanDisk 2 terabyte uh, solid state drive, has incredible read write times. Uh, I decided to go uh, back to external after a couple years of going internal, just because I got a little sick of kind of micromanaging my internal library. Also saves me a little bit of money because uh, while the Apple internal SSDs are ridiculously fast, um, it is a bit on the expensive side. So um, has a nice little short throw cable um, that comes with it. So it makes for a very nice, just quick connect place done nice and neat all right going back into the bag i have my denon headphones now uh, this is actually a slightly newer model uh, than the ones i had for a number of years they discontinued uh that one i believe these are the hp yep hp 600s had the hp 500s previously really great headphone very comfortable really good sound response now, one little fun fact about uh, using a coffin like this is you can use this little side class as a headphone holder nice and easy now one additional small thing i have found is this moco stand uh, it just folds into this nice little triangle you can actually adjust the height different ways it has four little rubber feet on the bottom and works great to hold my ipad all right now for 2019 i think i'm going to go the way of virtual dj i've used serato for years uh, generally was happy with it but there were some few you know oddities and whatnot that made me at least look at virtual dj and have been pretty impressed by it now one quirk that i've learned um, and this may be just for the ns7 III, um, but if i do not have this powered up when i launch virtual dj not all the uh the functions light up properly so some of the uh, effect functions sometimes the uh, hot cues and whatnot they'll light up odd colors sometimes and whatnot so just as a quick pro tip i always turn my ns7 III on first and then i go ahead and launch virtual dj now another tip that i have is i always use my sub covers whether my old yamahas or these ev50 uh, covers I use these as kind of a catch-all. Uh, so I'll throw my, uh, my top cases in here. I'll throw my uh, SKB uh, uh, front uh, panels in here, wherever is necessary. So when I have to carry this back to my vehicle, it's all kind of tucked nice and neat. Like this. All right, my setup is not complete without my Maui 5 Go's. Uh, these battery powered speakers that I broadcast out via IEM allows me incredible flexibility, be it for cocktail, ceremony, dinner, wherever is needed, even dance fill, I can use these. Now, in typical setup, I might have one Maui 5 already set up for a ceremony, the other set for cocktail. If it's for a larger crowd, I might have both Maui 5 Go's set up for ceremony quickly grab my IEM, swap it out with my, uh, my reception uh, frequency, and bring that in. I can pick these up anywhere I need to. They last for the entire event uh, from pre-ceremony all the way to the end of a dance segment. Incredible uh, piece of kit here. All right, so speaking of my IEM, here's the lav pack for it. Uh, looks like your standard uh, microphone uh, lav pack. I use Duracell Pro Cells uh, for these. I've tried some other brands and not all of them just lasted as long as I wanted to. Now, well, you know, another short NLFX cable is a one footer, 3.5 millimeter over to XLR. Just be aware, this actually has to be wired in a slightly different pattern uh, to uh, work properly with these uh, Sennheisers. All right, so now I got sound coming out my mains, coming out of my NS7 III. But I also have sound coming out from my Maui 5 Go's, and they're not in frame because they're over this way. So that's it in a nutshell for my EV50s and my mixer out to the Maui 5 Go's, my UI16, my microphones, my UPS. This is how everything works in conjunction. But now we're going to go over to my cart, get everything assembled for the ceremony, and start working on that. All right, everybody. So you've seen this before. This is my Mover 6, um, also now known as the AMG 750. Uh, this is what I use for every event to roll my equipment in and out. But I also use this to serve as a ceremony platform like 80-90% of the time. Uh, it gives me a quick way to go in and out um, of an area. I can move things around. If I have to be powerless, 
um, at a site, but let's say there's power some uh, many feet away, I can always have this set up, hooked up to power so it maximizes my battery uh, as much as possible. Then I'll unplug it and then roll it to the ceremony site when necessary. So it gives me a lot of flexibility uh, to go in and out and uh, be quick with it. All right, you've seen this before, but this is kind of my 2019 uh, revision of things. Uh, you have my digital mixer box, as I call this, and uh, it houses just a couple things now. Um, in previous versions, I had microphones in here, and I've actually stripped that out in favor of a different modular solution now. But what we have in here is my UI16. Again, an amazing piece of equipment, uh, probably one of the biggest enablers that I have as a solo DJ. I have a very extensive uh, video on this and blog post. I'll have, of course, those links below. And of course, also with this, I have the IEM uh, 300 from Sennheiser. I have this in both my boxes. And what this allows me in the combination with the UI16 in combination with my UPS is ultimate flexibility. I don't need power. I don't need wires. I can place speakers wherever I want to. I can place this unit pretty much anywhere I want to. I can go hundreds of feet if I really, really wanted to. But I normally don't do that because I don't want to have those delays and microphones um, you know, playing a part in making the sound a little bit odd or something. So I'll usually keep this as close by as possible, but out of the way as much as possible. Um, in all of this, I also have a trip light PDU. Um, this does not have any type of conditioning or uh, or anything of that nature within it but what this allows me is multiple parts on the front and on the back it's not necessary so much for the ceremonies but if i ever had to swap this out for reception this is where i plug in my subs and whatnot if i have to plug in my phone or anything like that if i've lost charge or something this just gives me access to the front and because i have my ups's i can have that all conditioned so i don't have to worry about this occupying that need for it other than that, the other thing that I have in here is, and this is kind of a DIY piece, is I've cut off the standard uh, plug that you would see on a PDU like this, and I've married it up with a PowerCon connector. And pretty much all my power that I have between my microphone boxes, my mixer boxes, are PowerCon connectors. So it just gives me some additional uh, level of security that things won't accidentally slip out, get tripped and uh, pulled out. And all of this is inside an SKB 6U shallow case. I've had this for now for a few years. Um, I actually experimented with doing some different cases and I actually were not happy uh, with those solutions. So I keep on coming back to this shallow case, but this is my digital mixer box in a nutshell. All right, well, here's what I call my microphone four pack. Uh, this has four Sennheiser G3 uh, microphones. Um, it also has an ASA-1 antenna uh, splitter. This also provides power to all four of these. So all I need inside of here is just one power brick uh, to power all these up. Uh, I have this uh, custom panel, again, made by uh, Ben Stowe and NLFX with uh, funky names that I put on it. Yeah, I gotta have a little bit of personality in all this. I also have uh, short uh, XLR cables that were made for this. Also a short, uh, and this is a two-footer uh, PowerCon uh, cable for my power. Uh, these are uh, 16 inches uh, that I made these, so they just perfectly uh, marry up on this. I can go up to full six mics on this if I needed to, uh, and people might say, why do I need so many mics? Well, if you have everything from a full video production where I might have to uh, mic up the groom, might have to mic up the bride, of course, the officiant, what if you have a vocalist? What if you have uh, multiple speech readers? And then on top of all that, I have additional inputs. If there's ever any live bands, uh, singers, anything like that, I can plug them in as well. So the combination of you know, four microphones up to six, if I throw my second pack in here, plus the additional channels in here covers virtually any situation that I would run into in a ceremony. All right, another video that I've made, uh, this cable file bag has been awesome. I have uh, two bags, one for ceremony, one for reception. I have everything in here from adapters, batteries, all my cables uh, that I've been pulling come from this bag. Um, and it allows me whether I want to carry the bag um, over to the site or roll in on this cart. It keeps everything uh, nice and tidy. All right, now we've come to power. Here's the APC uh, Pro 1500. There's also the CyberPower uh, model as well. Definitely check out my video out there because there's only two of these models at this size, at this capacity, 
that puts out pure sine wave. Uh, there's some rack mount uh, units available out there as well, but they're definitely a lot heavier and a lot more expensive. Well, one of the advantages of using a UPS as opposed to you know, one of the DIY battery uh, solutions that you can build out there or you know some of these other like the Yeti you know, power uh, options that are out there that they do put out pure sine wave, but they're a little more expensive uh, to start. But this X is a true UPS. Uh, so you can hook this into power um, and uh, condition your power, you know, make sure everything is on the up and up. And if there happens to be a power outage, you're completely covered. The other advantage is, of course, you can run this completely independent. I'm about to do another test after a year of use on this, but I did get over an hour 45 using an EV50 at that point, along with my digital mixer, two microphones, uh, what my typical general setup would be. Um, I'm going to do another test on this and see you know, how much is depleted. It would naturally have to deplete to some level. But um, I don't, have not run into a situation uh, yet that uh, I ran out of battery power uh, for pre-ceremony and ceremony. I've had some long ceremonies uh, over the year. So um, what I'm going to do in this case is power this up. Hook in. Again, I have another... 16 foot uh, power con uh, cable uh, made up. I can always interchange this with one of these cables if they happen to die. But uh, what this gives me the advantage is, is not having to worry about tucking in uh, too many cables and whatnot. It gives me a short throw going from here to here. All right, well, here's the Maui 5 Go. Battery powered, great sound in such a small setup. It has been, again, a, a, a great addition uh, to my offerings because combining this with the battery power here on this UPS, along with my IEMs, I'm completely independent of any power that's at a ceremony. If there's no power at all, who cares at that point? But in addition, I can place these speakers anywhere, put them in different configurations. I just put the two, um, two elements on this. There is a center uh, fill to kind of uh, expand the top a little bit, but there's times where I might put this on a rock formation where I don't need uh, all the height on it. So it allows me uh, to, to do that. The only disadvantage I've had on this is on windy days, these will knock over. Matter of fact, this is the one that's actually fallen over twice on me. And just slightly on this top, it just separated ever so slightly. Nothing major, definitely uh, purely cosmetic and you can only see it up close and personal. But if you are in a windy situation, I would recommend putting sandbags. I got some black sandbags for this. Um, luckily on the event where it was so windy that they were knocking over, I had a videographer stand in for me and uh, threw his sandbags on that. So I was just eternally grateful and you know, bought my sandbags the day after on that. But this is again, an incredible piece of kit uh, that has enabled me uh, just complete flexibility for ceremonies, cocktails, dinners, and even uh, dance fill. All right, welcome to my wireless box. So this is an inexpensive uh, case, at least comparatively to what's out there. Um, I'll have the Amazon link below. Uh, and this houses my IEM receivers, my uh, lav packs for my mics, and three microphones. Now I actually had four IEM uh, receivers at one point and uh, I used to keep this all inside my uh, cable file bag. The problem is you don't always have a good visual of what's inside the bag and at one event I thought I packed them all and I only packed one. $500 mistake. So another good reason why to have you know a case like this where everything's sectionalized out so when you place something in there you know it's there and you're not thinking uh, twice that, you know, is it missing or whatnot? You've got a good visualization. Now, as for microphones, I actually have uh, these two typically paired up with my ceremony rig. I usually have my right one uh, paired up with my reception rig. I can always interchange what I need. It only takes a couple seconds uh, to sync up. But what I would typically do at a ceremony is at a minimum, have one mic at the ready. I, of course, have my IEMs and have a lav pack for the uh, officiant ready as well. All right, so we're almost at sound check, but we got to throw our USB sticks in. These are both SanDisk models, ones for playback, ones for record. And just so happened that this particular SanDisk model has red writing on it. So uh, easily distinguishable what's record, what's playback. Just throw it in here and it takes about five seconds for the unit to read it. All right, now it's time to control things, but just a quick note. Um, I've had to have many takes uh, during this video as I do with most of my videos. 
and that battery has been running solid um, and it still shows 105 minutes on this and that's with four microphones and I am my mixer and the router and uh, that thing will absolutely go strong for pretty much anybody's ceremony especially if you're not tying your speakers uh, to it but we have our standard iPad um, you can use a tablet you can use a phone you can use your laptop uh, that, that's a beauty of the UI 16 it's browser based so you're not tied into a specific kind of app now I have created a two shortcuts for this this again is browser based but I put those shortcuts um, in quick launch itself and uh, part of the reason I did that is I actually created uh, two different networks for my UI 16s I didn't want them to accidentally you know cross pollinate on the same uh, network and have issues so uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you know, don't fret because this is definitely getting a little bit more advanced talk on you know, IP addresses, subnets, and whatnot. But the basic premise is there's two silos, if you want to think about it, where one lives in that one and one lives on the other. But I can control each of them on the same iPad. All I do is connect to uh, those different Wi-Fi points uh, and life is good. So I'm going to go ahead, launch my uh, Ceremony app. And as you can see in here, I've actually minimized the interface to control my essentials uh, for a ceremony. I have uh, four channels uh, for my microphones. I also have my playback uh, for uh, audio. I do have my ability to uh, control record and playback right here on this area. And I keep, I'm sorry if the uh, focus keeps on coming out of this. Fortunately, the reflection uh, is freaking it out a little bit. When I want to see the tracks I'm going to be playing back, this is off that USB that's on the UI 16 itself. And I categorize everything uh, by the couple's uh, name, date, and then the part of the event that's happening. And again, I use my USB sticks as and my UI 16 as emergency playback. And I can also press that ceremony rig as my reception rig since they're virtually identical uh, in setup. All I have to do is literally swap out a, a cable and be done with uh, pressing that into service. So um, in this case, I already have it set on auto. So just autoplay everything I can shuffle as well. I will go into that part of the event that I need. And this in this case is my pre-ceremony. I just double click either on any file that I want or press play. And that's it. I can be recording at this point as well. It doesn't take any additional major resources on it. You can record and play back as you would want. And this, this is it. When I'm queuing in, um, you know, in this case for this couple I had, I had You're My Best Friend uh, for uh, people uh, coming down. And then when I had the bride coming down to uh, Grateful Dead and all I do is just fade out my track. I quickly click in and then I fade back up. Do I wish uh, this, this had um, uh, dual uh, track playback? That would be an absolutely nice feature. But I just don't think it's going to be coming. Uh, but that quick fade in and out, I've never had anybody complain um, on a ceremony of any type of gaps i really do it nice and smooth in and out where well, there it is ceremony reception all the pieces that work together you know both as a primary and backup solution how everything kind of just ties in makes my life easier as a solo dj and to be able to do everything that i do i hope this video has been informative and if so hit that subscribe button click that thumbs up ring that notification bell support my patreon page if you get the opportunity if you like videos like this and want to see more check out my 4DJs only playlist.